tonight, hotel infection spread, breaking news on a new hurdle for Sydney, plus the New Zealand travel bungle putting Australians at risk. Justice for George Floyd, a killer cop convicted, guilty on all three counts, cheers and tears across the United States. Gunfire in a Western Sydney park. The shocking suburban fight club. A North Shore public school warned over anti-police classes. The new push for cheap homes for seniors and singles in Sydney's hottest real estate zone. And the direct link between a bad night's sleep and dementia. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Mark Ferguson. Good evening. We have breaking news tonight with fears of a fresh case of COVID transmission within a quarantine hotel, Sydney's second in a week. Three overseas travellers who stayed at the Mercure Hotel in George Street flew in on April the 3rd, later testing positive to the South African strain. Contact tracers are investigating whether there was transmission between rooms. The trio are now in special health accommodation, while other travellers who stayed on the 10th floor are being contacted and ordered to isolate. Authorities might quietly wonder whether a hotel scare much like this one is just what's needed to get Australians lining up to accept COVID vaccines. At Melbourne's mass vaccination centre this morning, the masses were missing. Doesn't look too busy, it's not a queue out here. The first mass vax facility in the country to open to walk-ins, anyone over 70. No bookings necessary, none were needed. Another sign of vaccine hesitancy, despite what authorities claim. We know that there is strong demand from those groups. But with Sydney's just weeks from opening at Olympic Park, it's the first glimpse of how it will work. A temperature test, ID scan. A few questions to answer first. Just dozens this morning in a centre that can handle two and a half thousand a day. Never felt a thing. I know, it's so good, yeah? yeah. All willing to take the troubled AstraZeneca shot. I don't want to get COVID. I just want to, I believe that Everyone should get it myself. I'm really keen to get my injection and it's quicker than the getting from the GP. We, we were worried about blood clotting, but the risk of catching the coronavirus, it will be more. Among those rolling up, the state's chief health officer. How do you feel? Very good. <laughs> As the nation awaits a decision tomorrow on whether over 50s will get early access. The only uh, blocker now is how many people turn up at the door. I'm sure it'll build up, um, you know, it'll be whatever it is. But Victoria is now actively searching for AstraZeneca alternatives, pledging $50 million for a Pfizer-style vaccine factory. 12 months ago would have been the best time to have done this, but the next best time is right now. In Brisbane today, reports of a fourth blood clot case all but ruled out. The 40-year-old policeman developing DVT after knee surgery and a Pfizer shot. Too early to say whether uh, this uh, incident is linked to the, to the Pfizer vaccine. Also today, a test case decision which could have major implications for anyone who refuses to take the vaccine. The Fair Work Commission backing a childcare centre which sacked an employee who'd refused to take the flu shot. It's a landmark case employers will be watching closely. While in WA today, a spike in positive cases among incoming passengers despite new rules for a pre-flight test. I don't know if people are providing fraudulent uh, certificates. I don't know if they're getting COVID on the aircraft. I don't know if in the COVID testing clinics uh, they're acquiring the virus. Chris Reason, 7 News. And back to our breaking news. Chris Reason is at the McCure on George Street now. Chris, what's the latest from there? Yeah, good evening to you, Mark. Well, New South Wales health authorities are now desperately investigating uh, the potential transmission of COVID between three returned travellers who arrived here in the country on April 3rd and known to be carrying the South African variant of coronavirus. They checked in here to the Mercure on George Street and are staying, were staying, on the 10th floor of this hotel. Two from one family in one room, another person in the room immediately adjacent. Now those authorities trying to work out how the virus got Got from one room to the other. They've now been transferred out to a medical uh, hotel facility, but desperately searching now authorities trying to work out any other workers or anyone else who stayed in this hotel, particularly on that 10th floor between April 7 and 12. Anybody in that category, Mark, needs to immediately self-isolate and contact authorities. Chris Reason in the city. Thank you.
A major hole in our travel bubble with New Zealand has emerged with disturbing revelations. A cleaner who tested positive to COVID worked on planes from high-risk countries and aircraft travelling to Australia. Authorities say it's not a failure and maintain the borders will stay open. A bubble bungle. Confirmation the vaccinated Auckland airport cleaner who caught COVID from a high-risk red zone flight also worked on aircraft bound for green zones while infectious. But also includes having cleaned green zone planes flying back to Australia yes, on Monday. Authorities say the cleaner caught the UK strand of the virus from an infected passenger on a flight from Ethiopia to Auckland on April 10. They were positive while working on Monday, all close contacts returning negative results. I don't want to say that there has been a failure. Uh, there could have been a mistake somewhere in the process, which would be, um, you know, unfortunate. This is the same protocol that is used in Australia. In Auckland, Australians aren't worried. I feel like we're all in good hands. <laughs> Josh Beagley is happy to be here. He hasn't seen his dad in a year. So today's the day? Yes, big day today. He hasn't seen his new restaurant ever. Okay. It was meant to open in March well, last year. We had probably two weeks to go and then the whole world started kind of closing down. He got stuck on the wrong side of the ditch. That was a bit of a challenge, having that disconnect. At the moment, most Australians who've travelled to New Zealand are here to visit family and friends. But locals are preparing for a second wave of tourists who simply want a holiday. Probably around six weeks, we will start to push Auckland um, as a key destination for spring and summer. Operators are ready. It's the first step in a road to recovery. Hotels waiting. I think it's a lifeline to us. Restaurants raring to go. We love the Aussies here. Um, they're our favourite our favourite people in the whole world. Even former foes. <laughs> friendly. So we can't wait to welcome them through. In Auckland, Amelia Brace, 7 News. Guilty on all three counts, the former US policeman who killed George Floyd beneath his knee is a convicted murderer tonight. The deadly arrest captivated world attention and plunged America into weeks of protests and riots. Scenes replaced today with celebration and relief. As a jury, after just 10 hours of deliberation, held a white officer accountable for a black man's death. Minneapolis celebrates as the people win justice for George Floyd. He got what he deserved and I'm very happy. Justice was served. That's how we feel right now. That's what all these people out here feel, man. They're just like, finally, finally. <laughs> we can't stop killing our babies. <laughs> this, the verdict American cities so feared, some boarded up beforehand. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Derek Chauvin unflinching the 12 jurors unanimous on all charges. Yes. Yes. The cop who pinned George Floyd is now a convicted murderer. Say his name. George Floyd. Relief too for the Floyd family. <laughs> Today we are able to breathe again. We came for one thing and one thing only. Yes. That was justice for George Floyd. Yes. And today that's what we got. The defence had argued drug use and health issues could have caused Floyd's death. The jury had no reasonable doubt. It was 9 minutes 29 seconds under Chauvin's knee that killed him. The war and the fight is not over. This can be a giant step forward in the march toward justice in America. Earlier, the president had ditched convention and backed a guilty verdict while the jury was still deliberating. Afterwards, Joe Biden called the family and promised urgent reform to America's troubled policing system. It's not all police, it's the certain ones. On the street corner where George Floyd died, jubilation quickly burying fears a not guilty verdict would have unleashed another wave of the violence last year in the days following floyd's death i urge everyone to honor the legacy of george floyd by doing so calmly legally and peacefully for derek chauvin the 45 year old cuffed in custody 
and heading for a lengthy jail term. Can he survive jail? He might not. We were on the right side of history as we fought for justice for George Perry Floyd Jr. Say his name. Some resolution in the George Floyd case, but countless other cases are unresolved. Not least the 20-year-old shot here this month when a police officer apparently thought they were using their taser. Now we have to continue to move forward and uh, go stand up for Dante Wright and everybody else out there. This is just the beginning. There's still a lot of stuff that they need to improve, man. When we get police reform, when things change, then the trust can begin. And Tim Lester is live in Minneapolis now. Tim, there's plenty of relief tonight, but some concern for the weeks ahead. Yes, Mark, it has been delightfully quiet, in fact, here tonight, but there are some flashpoints ahead. Derek Chauvin, for example, is highly likely to appeal. Now, appeals typically fail in this country, but that will extend the case out. Second, the question of sentencing. Under Minnesota sentencing rules, he would get 12 and a half years as a jail term. Now, the judge will have the discretion to extend that jail term and very well might, but he may very well not satisfy those who would like to see Derek Chauvin get close to the 40-year maximum. One final note, that 20-year-old, the victim of the police taser blunder, uh, Dante Wright, his funeral is on in the next few days. Mark? Tim Lester in Minneapolis. Thank you. A violent fight club brawl has ended in gunfire in Sydney's west. New video shows a group of men trading blows before one suddenly grabs a gun, takes aim and pulls the trigger. What starts as a suburban scrap ends with bullets flying. The shooter, dressed in black and wearing a face mask, picks up a handgun dropped in a scuffle and takes aim at another man running away. He falls. It's unclear if he was injured. The fight appeared to be pre-arranged. Some men shaking hands before trading blows. It happened at Pompendetta Park at Blackett last month. It was pretty loud. I think half the kids in the street came out and had a look. There was kids running everywhere. Um, there was cars. They were jumping into the cars as they were running away. Police only made aware of it when this video began circulating yesterday. It's shocking. Like, you don't think it would happen in your own area. I've got five kids of my own, so, yeah, I don't let them out of the store. The park is surrounded by homes used by children and schools for sport. Police say they've already identified some of the people in that video and are now working on figuring out who else was involved. They want to speak with anyone who might recognise the men or have information on the incident. They don't know if the gun was real, but are investigating whether the fight is linked to an increase in violence between rival rap groups. Police are still searching for the gunman. Andrew Denny, 7 News. An accused serial rapist who police say preyed on girls and women across Sydney, Wollongong and Barrel has been hit with dozens of additional charges. Detectives have taken out apprehended violence orders against the 24-year-old man on behalf of all 19 of his alleged victims. In December, fitness instructor Anthony Glumack was charged with sexually violent attacks on five women. Since then, more females have gone to police and the number of his alleged victims has more than tripled. Was he surprised by the extra charges? A further 11 women aged between 18 and 28 have come forward, as well as three girls aged 14, 16 and 17. The 32 new charges include 16 counts of sexual intercourse without consent, five counts of common assault and six charges of stalk intimidate. Detectives say Glumac targeted women from inner city Sydney to Sydney's west and southwest, Wollongong and Barrel. Today, the 24-year-old was represented by legal aid in Campbelltown Court. The police prosecutor stating there are 19 complainants. This is an unusual matter. The accused rapist chose to remain in his jail cell when his case was heard here at Campbelltown Court. He's now facing almost 50 charges and today he was slapped with 19 apprehended violence orders. Do you know how he'll be pleading? Mm -hmm. Glumac will return to court in June. Natasha Squarey, 7 News.
Scott Morrison has announced a half a billion dollar investment in clean energy as he prepares for Friday's climate summit with US President Joe Biden. The Prime Minister says he's committed to reducing emissions and wants Australia to lead the world in hydrogen production. Scott Morrison has high hopes for a hydrogen fuelled future. I want Australia and hydrogen technology to be synonymous around the world. With a big boost in next month's budget, more than half a billion dollars, 275 million to create hydrogen hubs in regional Australia and 264 million for carbon capture and storage technologies to reduce emissions, creating about 2,500 jobs. The hubs bringing together technology developers, hydrogen producers and suppliers, combining skills to innovate and drive down costs. Like you have a Silicon Valley, you've got a hydrogen valley. Hydrogen can be extracted from water, methane gas or coal and can fuel cars, trucks, even ships. Power electricity turbines, replace coal in steelmaking and replace natural gas for cooking and heating. Hydrogen is zero emissions gas. However, to be competitive, it needs to be produced for $2 a kilogram. It's currently almost double that. Hydrogen is now. Hydrogen will be the future fuel. It's inexhaustible. It will dramatically drop in price and it will become the base fuel of the planet. The funding is over 10 years, but Scott Morrison will use it at US President Joe Biden's virtual climate summit on Friday as proof of his government's commitment to emissions reduction. Labor says Scott Morrison's stolen its policy. They said our hydrogen policy at the last election was snake oil and now they're copying it. Mark Riley, 7 News. It appears to be a case of people power beating the billionaires. European soccer's Rebel Super League has now collapsed after the six English clubs pulled out this morning. Fans rejoiced on the streets of London, but the mega-rich owners are still getting their money. Outside London's Stamford Bridge, Chelsea fans blocked their own team's arrival. <laughs> delaying the Premier League match with Brighton, but soon the revolt had turned to rapture. The club, owned by Russian billionaire Roman Abramovich, had pulled out of the Rebels Super League. We're saving English football and I'm so happy about it. Abu Dhabi-owned Manchester City had backed out too, their own manager slamming the invite-only closed competition. It's not a sport when the relation between the effort and the success, the effort and reward doesn't exist, don't exist. So it's not a sport. Soon, all six English clubs had announced their withdrawals from Super League. It followed further threats from the British Prime Minister. How can it be right to have a situation in which you create a kind of uh, cartel? And the president of FIFA. They must live with the consequences. Expulsion from domestic leagues, players barred from World Cups. Now Spanish and Italian clubs are wavering too. Super League released a statement to say they'll reshape the project. But as fans are rejoicing, so are the club owners they want removed from English football. UEFA has suddenly found up to $11 billion to fund its revamped Champions League. And Sarah Grunach is live at the Arsenal Football Club for us. Sarah, what's been the reaction across England? Well, Mark, the collapse of the Super League happened late last night here, so plenty of people across Britain waking up to this news this morning. The Sun newspaper is calling it a huge victory for football fans. Cheerio, cheerio, cheerio. The Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, has tweeted in the past couple of hours saying that this is the right call for fans, clubs and communities right across this country. But the chairman of Juventus has told an Italian newspaper that there is a, quote, blood pact binding these clubs together and that the Super League has a 100% chance of success. So likely not the last we've heard of it, huh? OK, Sarah Greenouch in London. Thank you. Rugby league great George Piggins is fighting for life in hospital. The legendary South Sydney Rabbitohs player and coach is in intensive care in Royal Prince Alfred Hospital after being struck down by a mystery infection. The 76-year-old is in a serious but stable condition. Piggins is a treasured figure in sport for leading the fight to reinstate South Sydney in the competition after our Super League war. 
Time to check the weather now, and Angie, it's a smoky drive home for a lot of Sydney residents. Mark, hazard reduction burns are happening across Greater Sydney and the Illawarra. This afternoon, thick smoke drifted right across our west. These shots at Penrith show air quality significantly reduced. The haze is likely to settle overnight due to much cooler conditions or temperature inversion acting as a lid on the smoke. And it really is quite chilly right now. 17 degrees in the city, feels like 15 out in the elements. That change is linked to a cold front that crossed the nation's southeast late yesterday. It caused those temperatures to plummet, also fueled some precipitation. That included a dusting of snow in the snowy mountains. In lower lying areas, that weather fell as showers across the south. Generally, only a few millimetres recorded in the gauge. For Sydney, though, it is clear skies ahead. More details soon, Mark. Right, Angie, thank you. A Sydney primary school has been slammed by the police minister. Next, classroom controversy, the sign sparking a major backlash. Unit block inferno, the frightening wake-up call for residents in Sydney South. Opening fire in a restaurant, what sparked a man's chilling rampage. A birthday without her husband, the Queen marks her 95th with a low-key celebration. And later, how getting more sleep could lower your risk of getting dementia. 7 News, brought to you by Industry Super Funds. The police can't help themselves. My super doesn't work out for me. I'll be working forever. Well, we've worked all our lives for this place. We'd hate to have to sell it to fund our retirement. That's for sure. Authorised by B. Dean for Industry Super Australia, Melbourne. I love coffee. I bring 14 cups per day. Welcome to my new house, Carlos. Really? This is parade for a coffee. Ah! Is there anything you wouldn't do Carlos! for a coffee? Ah! Think you know my game? Think again. We need to get that coffee. Oh, I am Big Brother, and I'll see you... Monday, 7.30. Introducing free chef quality cookware from Coles. They look impressive. Let's put them to the test. For every $20 you spend in one transaction, scan your Flybys card to earn one cookware credit. Non-stick, how good is that? Super durable. Perfect for a sauce as well. Plus, get a bonus cookware credit when you purchase selected products from these participating brands. Collect all seven cookware pieces. That's the way to cook like a pro. Free chef quality cookware from Coles. Value the Australian way. Mondays aren't so bleak. I compare the market. This prize is every week. It's near cap Mondays. Putting Mondays on the map. Oh. Just compare the market and please download the app. Simple app. There's a glass and a half in everyone. Get that holiday glow, even without the holiday. With new Olay Super Serums, it goes 10 layers deep into your skin to bring out an even glow from within. New Olay Super Serums with vitamin C. At Coles, there's hundreds of prices down and counting, so you can lower the cost of your weekly shop. The price of breakfast is down, with Coles Orange Juice 2 litres down down to $5. Coles, value the Australian way. Don't tell Grandad, but he was right. I've overcooked these steaks. <laughs> I'm always right, son. I thought you'd know that by now. Dad, how on earth did you hear that? Have you heard of Amplifon? At Amplifon, the hearing care professionals experience our latest technology hearing aids, including the new Ampli Mini. So small, it's almost invisible. To book a free hearing test at your local Amplifon clinic, call 13 My Ears. That's 13 69 32 77. Amplifon, the hearing care professionals. Welcome back. Residents at a unit block in Sydney South woke up to smoke and flames this morning when a fire broke out on the top floor before spreading to the roof. More than 30 firefighters worked to contain the blaze at Janelli shortly after 5 o'clock. Residents managed to get themselves out. Paramedics treated one person for smoke inhalation. The Education Department has launched an investigation into a North Shore school after anti-police posters made by young students were put on display. 
The school has now apologised to parents, but the police minister is demanding the principal and teacher involved be sacked. Spotted on a school open day inside a grade 5 and 6 classroom, posters made by students at Linfield Learning Village with slogans that are demeaning to police and law enforcement. Well, these children are just way too young to have this sort of brainwashing occur in the classroom. Today, in a letter to parents, the principal apologised for the offensive material. The Education Minister, though, has ordered an urgent review, saying it represents political activism in the classroom. There is no place for a poster like that to be on display uh, in any public school in New South Wales and it made me really angry. These children should be taught to respect the police and that the police are somewhere safe to go. Some parents though today defending the school. Good that you start early so that they are aware of these issues and they are aware of what is right, what's wrong. I'm really, really pleased with um, the kind of level of thinking that my children are getting here. Linfield Learning Village is a relatively new school, having been open for just the past few years and is described as having a progressive education model. There are no class bells and students here don't wear uniforms. The department confirming the posters have now been removed from the school. Cameron Price, 7 News. China's deputy ambassador has slammed Australia for banning Huawei, claiming our government was involved in the immoral suppression of Chinese companies. Speaking at the National Press Club, Mr Wang said Beijing is open to repairing the relationship, but urged Australia to respect China's sovereignty. China is not a cow. I don't think anybody should fancy the idea to milk China when she's in the prime and plot to slaughter it in the end. Mr Wang would not say when Chinese diplomats will return Australian ministers' calls. A husband has executed his wife and the man she was dining with in the middle of an LA restaurant. Calmly pulling a gun from a brown paper bag, he shot the man. Then, after his wife tried to fight back, she too was killed. The chilling video shows the gunman reloading and shooting again before casually leaving the building. Police say he was detained at the Mexican border. Queen Elizabeth is marking her 95th birthday just four days after her husband's funeral. It's reported Her Majesty will have a private low-key day still in an official period of mourning. It's expected some family members will visit at Windsor, but there are reports tonight that Prince Harry has already flown home to the United States. A Lane Cove pet owner has been sent a chilling letter next barking mad what a neighbour is threatening to do to her dog. Ratepay a slug for a Christmas party in April. We're live to the lavish event. A feathered friend found the sheepish apology from some big bird bandits. And ahead in sport, the fallout from Latrell's big suspension as South insist he's not a dirty player. Spectacular. Unforgettable. Our 2021 Grand Finalists! Winning this time would be even sweeter because I get to share it with my family. It's all or nothing. It's been just such a lovely journey. To win this, that would be the greatest thing ever. I'm inspired by my daughter. I hope that she is proud. This dance, it has to be perfect. The spectacular Dancing with the Stars All-Stars Grand Finale. Sunday, 7 o'clock on 7. Ever since I've retired from basketball, I've never been busier. You say bet? There's a lot you can do in a few seconds, even with just one hand. I never miss having a bet on Friday Night Footy. Sunday football. Ten legs, same game, multi. Glory, glory to Saturday. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Good night, ladies. It's shocking easy to bet anytime, anywhere with the points bet app. Go to the edge of your comfort zone and keep on going. Discover the world's leading sport brands for less with 25% off the iconic autumn shopping event. Live your way. Flavour you can munch. munch. Flavour you can crunch. crunch. Flavour just for me. Yeah. Flavour you can see. Shapes. New shapes, mini bites. Light crunch, big flavour. 
Get your Woolies worth with Delivery Unlimited. Sign up today and get unlimited deliveries and a free 30-day trial. That's why I pick Woolies. What am I looking forward to? Well, I just really want what I have today. The more life changes, the more you know what's important. MLC. I personally want to thank everyone for supporting their local restaurant and Richet's over the last 12 months. And thanks to the government, everyone gets to spend two $25 vouchers at their local Richet's. See you at your local Richet's soon. Let me and my team serve you. New limited edition Nutri-Grain Oat Plus Vanilla Malt Flavor. One all-time great, inspired by another. Finesse level taste. Welcome back. Her former sports minister, John Sedoti, has denied threatening local councillors if they didn't fall into line on planning decisions. Mr Sedoti sent an email to Liberal councillors in Canada Bay warning their positions could be challenged if they didn't agree to zoning changes. Not persuasion. Not at all. Not influence. Not at all. Not direction. Not at all. And not a threat. Absolutely not. The ICAC is investigating whether the Dremoyne MP used his influence to benefit his family's property interests. Work has officially begun on a new development to provide affordable housing to seniors and single parent families in Sydney's northwest. It's being built on the site of one of our city's first social housing projects for women after World War II. For 87-year-old Lorna Clifford, affordable housing has become a home. 15 years ago, she lost everything. Baptist Care put a roof over her head. I'm very grateful and I try to repay that by helping other people that are coming in. Now others will have that opportunity as this plot of land in Carlingford is transformed into 162 affordable homes. 60% targeted at looking at housing those aged 55 and over. Single parent families and others in Sydney's West face Facing rental stress will be prioritised. There are almost 2,000 people in this region waiting for social housing. Due to be complete in late 2022, the $70 million project is part of the state government's billion dollar social and affordable housing fund program. There is still much more to be done uh, and we're aware of the the lists that are there and the people that are needing housing, but uh, we're investing like we never have before. The site has a rich history. This is where Baptist Care had its first housing facility back in 1948, providing homes for women who were struggling to find a place to live after World War II. Similar to its roots, the most vulnerable in our community will rebuild their lives here. Miley Hogan, 7 News. The state government will pay a Chinese company $100 million to shelve plans for its coal mine on the Liverpool Plains near Tamworth. Farmers had fought for 13 years fearing the mine's effects on groundwater, farmland and animal habitats. It means there's no mining here on the Liverpool Plains. Uh, it's the end of this saga. Uh, full stop. In 2017, state authorities paid more than $260 million for the project to be scaled back. The future of 1,000 jobs surrounding the $1.6 billion investment is now unclear. Sydney Lord Mayor Clover Moore has been forced to defend throwing a belated Christmas party this evening, costing tens of thousands of dollars. Serena Andalora was at Town Hall where the event is being held. Serena, critics have questioned the timing and the cost of this event. They have, Mark. Good evening to you. The out-of-season Christmas party is set to be a lavish $50,000 affair and it has some councillors furious. Liberal councillor Christine Forster has called
called it a rally for Clover just five months out from the local government elections. The Lord Mayor's office told us though the annual stakeholder reception has been held since the 1990s to thank friends of the City of Sydney and while the party is usually thrown at the end of the year, it's happening now because restrictions have eased. It's of course not the first time Clover Moore has been blasted for slugging ratepayers for an extravagant bash. In the past she's thrown New Year's Eve parties costing hundreds of thousands. She is set to run for her fifth consecutive term at the end of the year, Mark. OK, Serena, thank you. A family on Sydney's North Shore say they no longer feel safe living in their home after someone tried to poison their puppy. Jolene has since made a full recovery, but her owners have been left shaken by the ordeal. They say it's a dog's life, but this week Jolene almost lost hers chewing on a poisoned bone. I was just freaking out. My, I was screaming. My husband was getting ready for work. Sherry Blair found the bone with an anonymous letter. Your dog is to be poisoned. Too much barking. Sorry, but no choice. Your fault. She means the world to me because I, I've always had dogs and they... A little one Bailey died. The seven month old made it to the vet in time, but the ordeal has taken its toll. I wouldn't really give a sh if they were thrown in jail for life or even dropped dead. Sherry and her husband are planning to move house, unsure who's responsible. One of the most common poisonings are rat poison or rat bait. Um, and this can cause bleeding into the internal organs. Police are investigating the allegations and have the letter for DNA testing. In New South Wales, it is a criminal offence to throw or leave poisons for the purpose of killing a domestic animal. Offenders face a maximum penalty of five years in jail and a $22,000 fine. First step is mediation and usually that resolves the issue there. To ensure everyone's happy. Isabel Mullen, 7 News. A dangerous stunt has been caught on camera in Perth. A shirtless man scaling a high fence then diving head first into a public swimming pool. But it nearly didn't go to plan. He almost slips off onto the concrete below before righting himself and taking the plunge. Perhaps proof some people will go to extreme lengths to avoid paying an entry fee. A stolen Big Bird costume worth $160,000 has now been returned to a Sesame Street circus in Adelaide. It was discovered this morning along with an apology note left in the beak from the Big Bird bandits. They brought Big Bird back in one piece and he's in great condition. Here he is walking around freely once again. So, yep, no, we're very happy to have him back. And there was no rest for Big Bird today, performing two shows for fans. It's now more important than ever to get a good night's sleep. Next, how many hours you need to lower the risk of dementia. Soon, the new device making sure you never lose your wallet or keys again. Revving up for a major revamp, the plan to transform Sydney Dragway. Soon in sport, the big winners and losers and all the fallout from a massive night at the NRL judiciary. And we have a few chilly mornings in store across Sydney. I'll have all those details shortly. It's news happening now. The trusted news feed you need. Every story, every day. Connect direct to 7news.com.au Academy Award winners Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman. Hope is a dangerous thing. The Shawshank Redemption, tonight on 7. You can't go past IGA for hundreds of weekly specials right across the store. Like Smith's Chips Multi-Pack 20-Pack Varieties, $5.50. And Cold Power Liquid 1.8-litre Varieties, $8.75. Half price. Now at your local IGA. People of the world. Every now and again, greatness comes along. An innovation worth banging on about. Introducing McCain Quick Cook Chips. Crunchy greatness in half the time. It's worth banging on about. Ah, McCain, you've done it again. Is that your dog? It's the neighbour's dog. Will my insurance cover this? Budget Direct would have provided you with temporary accommodation for up to a year while they repaired it. Budget Direct. Insurance solved.
Light and Easy's Jumpstart Plus combines their award-winning healthy meal delivery service with their new app to help you achieve your weight loss goals sooner. I've lost 11 kilos in 11 weeks and that first two weeks was dramatic. Like, that was my jump start. Fast track your weight loss success with Light and Easy's Jumpstart Plus. Jumpstart gave me the confidence to keep going. Everything that Jumpstart said it was going to do, it did. Jump on to lightandeasy.com.au. <clears throat> first signs of a cold that will knock me down? Not if I knock it down first. New VIX First Offence. It traps, inactivates and removes cold viruses. Helps knock down a cold before it takes hold. VIX First Defence. Geeks to you save my life. Actually, I just saved all these photos. This PC had a virus. Geeks to you set up, synced up and sorted out my world. Well, her IT world at least. With our new improved download speed. We're streaming every night. Is there no end to their problem-solving powers? If there is a problem we can't fix, you don't pay. They may be geeks to you, but they're miracle workers to me. Call 1300 Geeks to You and we'll come to you. Get your Woolies worth with Delivery Unlimited. Sign up today and get unlimited deliveries and a free 30-day trial. That's why I pick Woolies. Some people will do anything to avoid alarming the police. And then there's these guys. I hate the prison. Highway Patrol, tonight on 7. Welcome back. Time now for a check on the markets with Gemma Acton. Thanks, Mark. Well, it wasn't a good day for Aussie shares, but it could have ended up worse with the ASX 200 retracing some of its losses late in the day to close just below 7,000 points. Corporate travel management bucked general weakness among travel stocks after revealing more promising booking trends than anticipated. The Aussie dollar has tumbled back towards 77 US cents, while oil has slipped on fears about a surge in COVID-19 cases globally. And after being permitted to withdraw up to $20,000 from our super accounts last year, the ABS says those who did favoured paying off mortgages, rent and bills. Mark. Gemma, thank you. Sports Minister Jeff Lee was given the ride of his life today as a thank you for the government's $11 million upgrade of Sydney Dragway at Eastern Creek. Strapped into an AC Delco Pro Slammer, a 3,500 horsepower beast. Under six seconds for the quarter mile, not your standard ministerial limo. The upgrade includes a new strip, spectator areas, amenities and technical improvements. Elon Musk is defending his company after two men were killed in a driverless Tesla crash. Musk released a safety report from the company saying there's a higher chance of an accident in an average vehicle. He also claimed the autopilot was not enabled. The Qantas Museum in Longreach has been given a retro gift from the airline. It's a replica of a 1970s first-class lounge from a 747 Jumbo with a cocktail bar, swivel seats and room for 15 well-to-do passengers. It was built as a set for a safety video. It was considered revolutionary at the time because it was a dedicated um, lounge just for first-class passengers. The unveiling was part of delayed celebrations for Qantas's centenary. We often hear about the benefits of a good night's sleep. Now there's even more reason to prioritise shut-eye. New research involving almost 8,000 people has drawn a direct link between how much sleep we get in middle age and the risk of developing dementia later in life. After starting to lose his memory, Bill Yates was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. You're used to a way of life and then all of a sudden that way of life has suddenly changed. As a new study says, it could be linked to how much we sleep. Leading up to the diagnosis that I wasn't getting enough sleep. Maybe it was the work demands. From 25 years of data from the UK, the research found compared with people in their 50s and 60s who regularly got seven hours sleep a night, those getting only six hours or less were 30% more likely to be diagnosed with dementia. It's the first time that we've been able to really definitively say that sleep in midlife is associated with an increased risk of dementia. Other studies link Alzheimer's to a build-up of proteins forming plaque in the brain, but sleep helps clear them away. Australian researchers are investigating the quality of sleep people get and how that affects their risk. 
Experts warn that by mid-century, the number of Australians living with dementia is expected to double to more than one million. But the hopeful news is many of the risk factors, including a lack of sleep, are things people can do something about. We need to eat a good diet, we need enough exercise, and we need to keep our brain active. Paul Caddock, 7 News. Apple's latest offerings are getting plenty of attention, a device to make sure you don't lose your belongings, and computers that go back to the future. Plus, how new software can protect your privacy. We take a look soon on 7 News. But now Mel is back with Sport and Mel South Sydney remain defiant. They do, Fergo. A big loss at the NRL judiciary, but South have defended Latrell Mitchell. Details of the fallout of his heavy suspension next. Plus, the dancing dragon and former Origin star calls time on his career. And after the Super League debacle, Man United and Liverpool legends, like the fans, are calling for heads to roll. The honour, the respect, the history, the pride, and the silence that says it all. The Anzac Round begins Friday night with GWS versus Western Bulldogs. Then Saturday night, Melbourne and Richmond. And Sunday, the Anzac Day Clash, Collingwood and Essendon. Live and free this weekend on 7 Mate. It's time for change. New Omo Diluted Home Refill. It contains 50% less plastic. Mix it with water in a two-litre bottle and shake gently. Tough on stains, kinder to our planet. New Omo Diluted Home Refill. At Coles, there's hundreds of prices down and counting, so you can lower the cost of your weekly shop. The price of breakfast is down, with Coles Toasted Original Style Muesli down down to $3.10. Coles. Value the Australian way. There you go, guys. <laughs> Come on, mate. Yeah. Righto. <laughs> Come on, Oz. <laughs> Oz Lotto, bringing the big Aussie fun every Tuesday. The cook deserves applause. For when they already had too much on their plate, they stepped up to it, dishing up a triumph. Because midweek isn't a hump, it's a mountain. But this cook shook things up and stole the show. Sure, we may do the prep, but you take all the glory. Bird's eye. Flavor you can munch. munch. Flavor you can crunch. crunch. Flavor just for me. Yeah. Flavor you can see. Shapes. New shapes, mini bites. Light crunch, big flavor. No small SUV packs more features in than the Ford Puma to help you fit more into your life. And right now, your Ford dealer has a finance offer to also fit your life. Get a new Puma from just $125 a week with a deposit of only 10% and no balloon payment. So you can drive away in style with a great rate and no surprises at the end. Hurry into your Ford dealer before June 30. Introducing free chef quality cookware from Coles. They look impressive. Let's put them to the test. For every $20 you spend in one transaction, scan your Flybys card to earn one cookware credit. Non-stick, how good is that? Super durable. Perfect for a sauce as well. Plus, get a bonus cookware credit when you purchase selected products from these participating brands. Collect all seven cookware pieces. That's the way to cook like a pro. Free chef quality cookware from Coles. Value the Australian way. Welcome back. Cronulla stalwart Chad Townsend has confirmed a move to North Queensland that could spark a bidding war for off-contract halfbacks. The proud Shire boy fought back tears today, but even with a caretaker coach, believes he can leave with a second premiership. Sharks veteran Chad Townsend told Seven News he had a rough night's sleep, preparing to inform his teammates his journey at the club will end this year. Yeah, I am. You know, when I think about it. Um... You know, it was a tough decision, you know, like, I love the club and, you know, I've made a lot of good memories here and got a lot of good mates here as well. And I grew up, you know, 20 minutes down the road, I used to sit on that hill over there and I dream of playing for the Sharks. As Seven News revealed on Monday, Townsend was lured by stability, signing a three-year deal with the Cowboys. I've got three beautiful young children now who uh, rely on me and my, and my wife and this decision uh, has been for them. Everybody. 
Everyone, hello. As a player, you don't get spoken about enough for looking after yourself and your family. He stepped out of his comfort zone. He's moving to another state with his family to to better their life. Josh Dugan addressed criticism levelled at him for playing the pokies at the local club while his teammates played in Newcastle. Went for dinner, I was home before kick-off and I was on the couch watching the game, screaming at the telly. He copped a couple of head knocks. He wasn't, it wasn't in his best interest to be travelling to Newcastle. Dugan cops it a bit more than most, but you know, took the time off that he needed and um, you know, hopefully he's back out there for us this weekend. The Sharks have been a little hit and miss this season, a lot like the NRL judiciary, who last night rubbed Latrell Mitchell out for four weeks. We came in here hoping for a grey down and didn't get it. His suspension makes him ineligible for this year's Dalian Player of the Year award. Victor Radley was cleared to play in the Roosters and Zach Day clash with Victor the Dragons. Radley, think about the new rules and seven years. The referees have been... Seven News can reveal the Eels have joined the Bulldogs and Tigers in the chase for Panther Brent Naden. Parramatta coach Brad Arthur is keeping a close eye on Naden, who's yet to play in the top grade since his off-season cocaine ban. The Eels arrived in Darwin today, where Mitch Moses wouldn't comment on a link to the Broncos, who they face on Friday night. The club and uh, my management are working through it at the moment. I'm, I'm not too sure um, where it's at at the moment. After 223 games, 13 origins for the Blues and seven tests, the dragon who loved to dance, Trent Merrin, has retired immediately, saying he's outgrown the game and the game's outgrown him. State of Origin is returning to Perth next year with Optus Stadium to host Game 2 of the series. After two straight wins, the Giants face their biggest test on Friday night. Over 10 years, they've built a heated rivalry with the Western Bulldogs that spilled into an all-in melee in their last clash. The Bulldogs are unbeaten and leading the AFL. Both sides like playing against each other and um, I think it'll be a wonderful clash, a great spectacle Friday night and, you know, really looking forward to it. Lockie Whitfield could return through the VFL in two weeks after his serious liver injury. The IPL continues despite India's mass COVID outbreaks and Steve Smith is fighting hard to stay in the Delhi Capitals 11. Smith made 33 from 29 balls this morning, helping Ricky Ponting's side defeat the Mumbai Indians by six wickets and move to second on the table. This year's Bathurst 1000 will feature the oldest, youngest driver combination in the history of the great race. 57-year-old Russell Ingall is coming out of retirement to partner 18-year-old Brock Feeney. The enforcer's going to shake things up, no doubt. I still believe there's a lot of latte drinkers amongst a lot of them and like wearers and, and, and look, I've got no drama with that. Ingall won in 1995 and 97 with Larry Perkins. The game of football as we know it can go on after the Rebel Super League collapsed this morning. As we reported earlier, the six English clubs pulled out under threats of severe sanctions from the UK government and FIFA. Now, fans and club greats want the wealthy foreign owners removed. They need throwing out of that club because there's no way they can turn up an, an audience again and be trusted. Should these players be punished? Should the managers be punished? They shouldn't be. It's the owners of these football clubs, not the football clubs, who are the big problem. Super League officials say they will reshape the project, Fergo. There is no doubt this is not the last we've heard. This has been years in the making, but, gee, it was good to see it all come crashing down and there's a long road to go to rebuild trust. Not looking so super now. Not, a, not at all. Thank you, Mel. Apple has gone back to the future with its latest product launch, reintroducing coloured computers first seen in the 90s and a purple iPhone. What's new is Apple's AirTag to help find lost property and better privacy controls. Springtime in California. Time for a new crop of apples emerging from the cold store of COVID. After the challenges of this past year, we're optimistic that brighter days are just in front of us. What is in front of us are brighter products. With Apple launching a purple iPhone alongside an iMac desktop in seven new colours. Both the iMac and the two revamped iPads have a new chip with more power. Processing power to do lots of tasks at the same time, as well as doing it efficiently, meaning you still get a lot of battery life. For anyone prone to losing their belongings, attach these air tags to your keys, wallet, or anything else you're likely to misplace. And any iPhone on the network can track them down. You could lose something um, you know, in a different country, and as long as there's an iPhone nearby, it anonymously can send its location back to you. Less glitzy, but just as much of a game changer are the new privacy changes Apple has unveiled. From next week, 
iPhone users will be able to choose whether or not to allow Facebook and other apps to track them online. Advertisers use our data to build up profiles of our behaviour and spending habits and deliver targeted ads. Having that sort of infrastructure provider and step up and um, give people a choice where you know regulators have failed, where these um, advertising companies have failed um, to get with the times is an incredibly important step. Gemma Acton, 7 News. Now a quick look at what's on Sunrise tomorrow. Thanks, Virgo. When you wake up, look good and help save the planet. How popular clothes brands are going green and keeping you styled up. See you in the morning, Sydney. Now Angie's back with the forecast. Angie, it's starting to feel a lot like winter. Mark, mainly in the mornings with lows to dip into single digits this week. The full forecast is next. Hey, look! There's Dad! 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 The best thing that's ever happened to me. That's why I love you. Oh. Wow, OK. Um. If you're willing to settle for being second best, you think I'm second best? Tell me again how solid you two are. <laughs> Home and Away, weeknights on 7. This weekend is a great time to get out into the garden and do some weeding. And here at Bunnings, we can help you make it happen. There's quite a few ways to keep your weeds under control organically. You'll need gloves, a mask, you can use some mulch, organic spray, trowel, weed fork or puller. It's best to pull weeds out when they're young because it's much easier. You can do this by hand or with a weed puller. Make sure you take the roots out as well and that way they won't grow back. Mulching can prevent them from growing back too. You can use a trowel or weed fork for small weeds. You can also use organic sprays. Doing this will have your gardens looking great in no time at all. So let's make it happen this weekend. Shop at Bunnings wherever you are, whenever you want. Get your Woolies worth with prices dropped on champagne leg ham. Sliced or shaved from the deli, dropped to just $19 a kilo. That's why I pick Woolies. Her for always being there with new Pandora jewellery. At Terry White Chemmart, we're here to help this winter. That's why pharmacists like Bridget are trained to administer flu vaccinations right here in store. Book now. Walk-ins also available. Terry White Chemmart. Now that's real chemistry. Love styling but hate the damage? New Pantene Miracle Treatments with Real Collagen. Intense Miracle Shots repairs damage for 100% stronger hair so you can style more. Dare to do extra Pantene. A window breaks down a long dark street and a siren wails in the night that I'm alright Cause I have you here with me And I can almost see Through the dark there is light If you knew How happy you are making me Oh, I never thought I'd love anyone so much Feels like home to me Feels like home to me Feels like I'm all the way back where I belong Get your Woolies worth with prices dropped on champagne leg ham Sliced or shaved from the deli Dropped to just $19 a kilo That's why I pick Woolies Tonight's 7 News headlines, an urgent investigation is underway into a possible COVID transmission between three people within a CBD quarantine hotel. The former police officer who pinned down George Floyd until he couldn't breathe has been found guilty of murder and manslaughter. A shot has been fired in a Blackett Park after a wild fight between a group of young men got out of control. And researchers have discovered a link between getting less than six hours of sleep a night and developing dementia. 
Now the latest on Sydney's weather is Angie. Thanks very much, Mark. It is going to be a chilly night across Sydney. Parts of the region will dip well into single digits. That will make this morning's minimum of 14 degrees look quite comfortable by comparison. The top was a little bit better, reaching 20.9. Most suburbs reached that 21 degree mark. 19 at Terry Hills and the airport, though. 15 for Katoomba. It was much cooler in southern New South Wales, though. The ski resorts even picked up a dusting of snow last night. This is Perisher and operators are understandably pretty happy with the official ski season not starting until June. The latest satellite image shows a cold front that has moved on, having surged across the state southeast, causing that cold weather. In its wake, we're still seeing southerly winds and a pool of cold air. Tomorrow, the combination of clear skies and dry southwesterly winds will lead to that rather chilly morning. Around the nation, Brisbane will be settled, nice and warm, 26 degrees, freezing tomorrow. Tomorrow morning for Canberra, a few showers about for Adelaide, Melbourne and Hobart. It's going to be warm in Perth, reaching 27 degrees. For New South Wales, plenty of centres will dip to zero or cooler overnight. It is going to warm up during the day under the sunshine though. So 23 degrees forecast for Port Macquarie, 20 at Wollongong. Griffith won't quite make it into the 20s with 19 the forecast top and 17 expected at Wagga Wagga. Across the suburbs it's going to be a little bit hazy in the morning as the smoke from hazard reduction burns settles with heat and clear skies that will disperse though making way for a sunny day. South West Sydney is in for a winter morning lows will dip to five degrees across Camden and Campbelltown to at Katoomba. Tops will improve mostly just reaching the 20s. On the water winds will tend west to south westerly 10 knots at first so fairly light increasing to 20 knots later in the morning. For the CBD a cold start 11 degrees a top of 23 although with southwesterly winds it is going to feel a fair bit cooler than that throughout the day and we are likely to see continued smoke haze in the morning followed by some sunshine. Ahead clear and cool for Friday and Saturday Anzac Day Sunday we'll see a little bit of a shift with some cloud cover and a shower on the coastal fringe light drizzle to follow until Wednesday. So, so starting to get chilly, Mark. Chilly in the morning, then all good. Thanks, yep. Angie. That is 7 News for this Wednesday. We'll have updates for you throughout the evening. I'm Mark Ferguson from all the team. I hope you have a great night.